is coming. Your blessing is coming. Your blessing is coming. Your blessing is coming. It's on the way. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's on the way. It's on the way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's on the way. It's on the way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's on the way. It's on the way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's on the way. It's on the way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's on the way. It's on the way. Anyway. Anyway, you bless me, Lord. I'll be. I'll be satisfied. It's anyway. Anyway. You bless me. It's anyway.
I still have a praise 
praise. Hallelujah.
thank the choir for ministering to us by the way of music. Amen. Thank you, choir. Our selection of scripture is found in the seventh chapter of the gospel according to Matthew. The seventh chapter, the gospel according to Matthew. While you're looking for that a few years ago, after the hurricane by the name of Katrina had hit in the Gulf area, New Orleans particularly, and there was thousands of people that was affected, thousands died. And I remember that our state convention felt a need for us to transport some goods to New Orleans. <laughs> Sam Talbot, our current president of the National Convention, he was assigned by the governor to receive food and clothing and all of that. And I remember when we had loaded the bus up full, we had a small crew that wanted, wanted to attend uh, that, uh, uh, where they was uh, housing the food and all of that at. So we drove down and en route to New Orleans, we got stuck on the highway, there was an accident or some trouble that was on the highway. We sat an uh, hour and two hours, I can't remember how long. But eventually the state patrolmen came by and they had asked us, all the vehicles behind us, they was turning around, going back to the exit to get off of the expressway. And they had asked us if we could turn the bus around. And so uh, Deacon Lattimore was our bus driver and as he was coached and guided by the patrolmen, he was unable, at least the highway was not wide enough for the bus to make the turn. And they was reluctant because they thought that Deacon Lattimore could not back the bus up about three, four miles to the exit. And so he told them he could. And so, as was our custom, uh, everybody prayed to themselves. And, and Deacon Lattimore didn't miss a stroke. He, got all the way back to the exit. And that particular experience always baffled my mind simply because we had sat that long on the highway. And after exiting, we had to go through a different kind of route to get there. And it seemed as though we didn't lose no time. 
I, 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 I believe that uh, however it ended up, God was with us. Amen. 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 And Tarver was not president then, but he and the people, they was golf every day, was very thankful. And uh, he talked about that a lot now at the meeting. A uh, reason that I that I read that I have a passage of scripture. I don't plan to preach too long, but hopefully that you will understand what I'm going to preach about. All right, sir. That is what is so important. Amen. Matthew 7 verse 13 and 14 reads, Enter ye in at the straight gate, that's T-R-A-I-T, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. We would like to use this subject, traveling to reach my destination. Amen. Traveling to reach our or my destination. Right, and <clears throat> In this uh, passage of scripture here, the uh, Matthew's gospel expresses that it's better to enter uh, at the street gate. It's T R A I T, that word simply means it is a narrow way of traveling. Uh, it is not a wide way of traveling, and the text speaks of the word a broad way of traveling, and here uh, the wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ as he uh, deal with the final part of the Sermon on the Mountain he says to us to enter in at the straight gate. And then he changes the subject a little bit and speak about for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in that direction. And so, uh, uh, taking uh, goods as we had to New Orleans, we had to end up on a smaller highway. Yeah. But it seemed as though we did not lose time right. because that was trouble on the expressway. Now to transform that to the uh, scripture that's being used here is that the Lord speaks about getting to our blessed uh, destination, the intent. Once one is born again, there is an, an intent to get to our heavenly abode. Once one has accepted the Lord in the free pardon of their sins, uh, it is uh, our desire to get to that destination, that place that we call heaven, a place of joy Amen. and happiness and et cetera. Uh -huh. And so Jesus is speaking about how one can reach the destination uh, as he had began his travel 
Uh, certainly, uh, the news people said that this particular day, the uh, Sunday after Thanksgiving, is the most traveled day in the year. And we will perhaps hear, as we listen to the news, many get stuck in airports, many accidents happen, and many people never really get to their destination due to something that has happened. Even those who made arrangements to get there quickly, they was unable to achieve their objective. And even as we make arrangements to get to our spiritual destination, the place that is called heaven, certainly on this day of natural travel, there are many that are traveling. And here in our text, it says that broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many would travel spiritually in that direction, the direction that leads to uh, trouble, preventing us from reaching our destination. Broad is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Well, what do you mean by all of that, Brother Matthew, in your writing? As he was moved and guided by God, the Holy Spirit, the broad way is the fast travel. It is the fast travel. It is uh, the abundance of uh, joy and happiness on that particular travel. The anticipation is to have a great and grand time. But the travel can be a reckless travel. It can be a dangerous travel. And quite often, once one become part of the big crowd that's traveling the broad way, going to have a great grand time. Sometimes it may not achieve, we may not achieve the objectives that we had planned. Amen. Sometimes the travel will get abruptly stopped Amen. due to some kind of problem. Yes, Sometimes we can become ill or sick or can get overwhelmed by the celebration and not reach our destination yes, in our travel. Broad is the way of fast traveling. And it's that way sometime in religious life. You know it's not an easy thing to break from all of the bad habits that we had before we was regenerated and born again. Sometimes uh, it seemed as though the old life was the better life that the broad way, the part as I was invited to, the uh, particular fun that I had, not that it was always good, clean fun, but it was fun. And so uh, the warning here as the Lord speak is that this broad way often leads to destruction. The broad way of life, the sinful way of life, the, the abundance of celebrating, and all of that can lead to destruction. Sometimes it's built on selfishness. That is, uh, the Lord, I get back to him and what he wants later on. I want to do my thing now. Don't want anybody in, interfering with what I'm trying to do. I want to do my thing. I want to have my fun. I want to celebrate my way. It doesn't matter who like it or who dislike it. 
That is what I want to do. Now, I want to just, uh, as I get ready to close out, I'm not going to preach long this morning. I just want us to remember if we have, if we have, if we have mapped out a destination that we want to arrive at, and spiritually speaking, if that destination is heaven, you will discover that that is a broad way. That is a narrow way. And you don't see a whole lot of travelers on that particular road. But it will get you safely to your destination. You may not have all of the bright lights on the street as you travel, but you will get to your destination, the narrow way, the straight way. That is the way we get to our destination. Does this mean that you don't have any fun? No, it means that you have good, clean fun. You know what clean fun is? Clean fun is doing the, the, the right thing, having joy and happiness. And does it, we don't need other things to help us to celebrate. We can get high on the Spirit of God. We don't need nothing to help me to lose my bashfulness. I can become as excited as I wish to be naturally because I'm filled with the Spirit of God and you never know when the Spirit of God is going to activate in you and make you act like you don't normally act. And folks will know that you're having a good time, but it's a clean time that you're having. And you will certainly make it to your destination if you travel the narrow way. You may spend some time being lonely because it's not a lot of travelers going that way. You may not do the things that you used to do because a lot of, a lot of travelers are not going that way. Right. Now, in the narrow way, it is to live a godly life. And it is a straight, that is a narrow way. To worship God from the heart is the straight way. To worship him from the heart is the straight way. Nobody can take it from you. Nobody can give it to you. It is between you and him. But he's able to keep us going and to enjoy life as we travel the straight way. You can make it, you can do it, you can accomplish it. And it doesn't mean that you would not have a good time, but it means that you don't need to get dizzy in the head to have a good time. Amen. Amen. You can have a good time yes, just being who you are. Amen. Don't have to impress nobody. Don't have to be a big shot. Don't have to steal the stage of entertaining others. But you can be just who you are. And you can have a great time and reach your destination. Some things I want to encourage you to do as I encourage, as the Lord has encouraged me to do. Want to worship God from the heart. From the heart. I want to, want to worship Him. Not trying to impress nobody. 
uh, not trying to let nobody impress me, but simply worshiping God from the heart. You know, I had a real regeneration experience. I used to be a bad boy doing bad kind of things. And I wasn't worrying about nobody then. And once the Lord changed me, I still wasn't worrying about nobody. I was just moved from the broad way to the narrow and straight way. And trust God as I moved down the straightway boulevard. I don't know if that's an appropriate name or not, but that's how I was moving. Met a true friend every once in a while. You know, a lot of folk that claim to be your friend just have a little trouble on the broad way. And those friends will get get fewer and fewer. You might even be there almost by yourself. Even sometimes family members will kind of back away from you. Don't like how you behave. But on the narrow way, you will always find a friend or two. And if you have a true friend or two, you can always make it to your destination. So worship God from your heart. And please, ma'am, and please, sir, make efforts to love folk that are difficult to love. You know, some folk are very difficult to love. But the Lord said, by love, shall all men know that you have been saved, that, that you are my disciples, that you love everybody. Jesus said, love your enemies like you love yourself. And I tell you, uh, once you are yoked up with Jesus, you'll be able to love those that are difficult to love. And all difficult folk to love are not outside of the church, but some are inside of the church. But just love them anyway, because you got a destination. You're on your way somewhere. And only the pure in heart a shell of sea God. When you own uh, the narrow straight way, remember to study to show thyself approved unto God. Because you're going to need the wisdom and word of God. Every once in a while, you can become confused on the narrow way. But you ought to keep going, and the word of God is like a light in your path. And the word will show you how to keep pressing forward. Ain't it all right? I know he's all right. I hope you have already decided to travel the narrow straight way. When you get to your destination, you'll get there and you will have a big celebration. I read somewhere is that at that destination, God shall wipe every tear from your eyes. There'll be no more sorrows, no more pain, no more sadness, no more trouble. For those things would have passed away. Ain't he all right? Yes, he's all right. Now make sure when you're on your way uh, to your destination, which we call heaven, the land of no more, the land of great glory. Make sure you pass by Calvary so you can get your past.
court stamp with the blood of Jesus. You need the right kind of insignia to be able to get through the pearly gates. But you can make it. If you slip up, you get up and you take off again. He's looking for the pure in heart. The Bible says the pure in heart uh, shall see God. As I get ready to close out, you know I re remember how it must have been uh, when the Lord Jesus hung on Calvary. His friends was very few. Didn't nobody stand under the cross that really knew him uh, for all that he had done for them but John and his mama Mary. Peter and the others was following from afar off. But he hung there. He died. Didn't he die on Calvary? He bled and died. On Calvary, he gave up the ghost on Calvary. Buried in Joseph, brand new tomb. But early on a Sunday morning, he got up from his burial place with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And I heard him uh, when he met the disciples on the Galilean hill. Go and teach my gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, I will be with you. I'll be with you. I'll be with you all the way from here to glory. He'll be with you on the narrow way. If you don't find the one friend, his name is Jesus. He'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. He will make it very profitable for you on the narrow way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the narrow way. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done thus far. Thank you, Lord, for all you're going to do. Thank you, Lord, for picking me up when I had fallen down. Thank you, Lord, for telling me I was somebody when others said I was nobody. Thank you, Lord, for making a way when there was no way. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your tender mercy. Had not it been for the Lord, was on my side, there's no telling where I would be, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, I love you Lord, thank you Lord, because you first love me, thank you Lord, he's got power, all of it in his hands. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and the door will be open. Ain't it all right? Traveling to reach my destination. I cannot stop. I got to keep on traveling to reach my destination. I cannot pause. You have to keep on traveling. It all started at Calvary. I was one of those who plunged in the blood of Jesus. 
freed from my sin and stains. Maybe someone in here today, you want to travel this straight way, this narrow way. It all starts at Calvary. Those who trust him will receive regeneration. We extend the invitation in the event that someone here is ready to receive him. We want you to have that opportunity to receive him as your savior, yes, yes. the captain of your life, right. as the choir sings. The invitation is extended to you, to you, and to you. Let us all stand, please. I'll have the joy, I'll tell the cast, that our worship experience has been beneficial to you. I do pray that you will continue to tune in that we may worship together again. Just a few things about our church. Golden Lee Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church. It is a church of common and concerned people where well, everybody is somebody, a church with a vision for ministry and religious education. And I do pray that the word of God is as important to you as it is to us. For John chapter one, verse one and two teaches us that in the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 14 of that same chapter speaks of Christ. It says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, Full of grace and truth. God bless you.